Hey everybody, what's going on? It's Mr. Hino with Mr. Hino's Lego Robotics. Today's video, I'm just gonna throw out some things, especially for those of you that are like rookie coaches, or maybe it's your second year, just things that sometimes coaches might forget to tell the teams, just so that it's just one of those things where everybody's on the same page and you're prepared. Because that's the key, is for your FLO competitions, you just wanna feel when you go to bed at night that you're prepared and not forgetting anything. So this video, I'm gonna kinda go over some things that sometimes people forget. Stay with me. All right, I'm back here in my back room of my classroom. I have old presentation boards from years past. But for this year, I definitely had to order uh, new presentation boards. So I'll leave you the link. Um, I got, we got these from Amazon. I got the pack where you get multicolors. So there's red, there's green, yellow, another green, and some blue. Um, just because your team's going to need these presentation boards for their project. In fact, we use multiple boards for our project because, you know, we can't fit everything on one. So your team is definitely gonna to need to order presentation boards. Even if I have uh, returning teams, I print this for them every year, just so that, you know, cause every year they might have a different example of the first Lego League core values. And you know, after a year they forget too. So I always print these out for the team members so they can write down an example from outside of first lego league of each of the core values so they can memorize them so they can just start to be thinking about them because it's never too early to have your team just be really really up on the core values knowing their favorite ones knowing which ones that their team does really well with so there's the core values switching gears to the robot game i Every year, just remind my teams to know what their missions are and how long it's taking them to do their missions. It's just pointless for your teams to practice missions if they don't even know if they're going to have time to do them all. It's just a very big time waster. It's just one of those things where it's like, guys, we can only do five missions in two and a half minutes. Why are we practicing others? Unless your team somehow manages to get faster, you know, quicker exchanging in the in home over here, where, you know, if your team can buy 30 seconds, then I'd say, yeah, go for a, an extra mission. But if your team can only do a certain amount of missions in two and a half minutes, the team needs to know that. They need to time themselves just so that, you know, time is of the essence and we just don't have enough of it to waste um, doing missions that we just don't have the time for and also when your team is considering what type of presentation mode you're going to be using for your project always keep in mind that it should be something that every team member is just buying into and they think it is fun it is something that they just want to do um you know if you're doing a skit and your team are, is like oh man we got to practice the skit that's when you know it's time to change the skit out. Just get rid of it. It's not something everybody is enjoying. It's not every, um, something everybody's buying into. Have a talk with your team. Say, if you don't want to do the skit, let's do something where everybody's like, yeah, forget the robot. Let's go you know, practice whatever type presentation you're going to do. But have it be something where everybody's having fun, everybody's involved. And lastly but not least, everybody's excited about Let's do this. Yeah. You know, you're coaches. You guys are the first ones to kind of notice the attitude like, all right, guys, it's time to practice your project. And, you know, you can start to see their faces like, really? That's when you know, hey, we got to either change what we're doing or create a way where everybody's going to be excited about it, whether it's something funny that somebody gets to do some part where you know everybody's like i get a chance to do that so um if we're gonna put a title on this one um make your presentation uh, method 
very exciting, something that every team member wants to do. And as you're doing the project, as you have certain team members involved with your project, whether it be the research, the problem, the solution, have um, each member own their particular part of the project, which means if Susie was in, in charge of the problem, why are you putting her in charge of you know, the solution or the research? So if somebody was in charge of some part of the project, they should be the one to present that particular part um, you know, when your team does the whole entire presentation. So it's just ownership and it's just making sure that, you know, the expert that was that part of the project, you know, they should be the one to speak about it. So when you're putting your whole presentation together and Suzy, it's Susie's turn, make sure beforehand you gave Susie the part that she was the one that was involved with. Because when you have ownership, then you're going to have least um, nervousness, um, least amount of forgetfulness because that person was the one that did the work for it. As your team practices for core values, definitely make sure that there is somebody that's timing, um, you know, that has a stopwatch or something that lets them know how long they have. Sometimes the, the judges will say, you know, one minute left, but if that doesn't happen, make sure there's a timekeeper in, on your team that will let the team know, hey guys, we got two minutes left, one minute left, so that your team knows that you know, they have to complete this task. I mean, they don't have to, but it's super important that the judges see that your team can manage the time to get this core value activity done. And while we're on the topic of core values, always have somebody else on the team that's monitoring how much involvement everybody is doing. Um, if somebody needs to be aware and say, hey, Johnny, you know what? Uh, come in and get this done because, you know, if Johnny is standing over there on the, on the sidelines and not being involved, the judges see that and your team's not going to get the greatest core values points or score because, you know, they're looking for team involvement and making sure everybody is involved. This last part is definitely for new coaches. As you're giving your team, you know, all of these a million things to do and remember, try to help your team out as best you can with having some type of visual checklist. Um, your team's gonna get super overwhelmed if you know they know there's a million things to do but they can't visually see it. Try to break up their tasks into you know doable chunks. Don't say, hey guys, I want these 100 things to be done by next week. Maybe break that up and say, okay, let's do five today, let's do five tomorrow. That way, you know, you know the whole concept of divide and conquer. You're just going to get a lot more done when the team can focus in on certain tasks rather than here. Here is a boatload of things to do and there's no real time frame. Plus, also when you're, the team goes in for their core values, they'll definitely get scored better if, you know, their strategy was, you know, we do a, we do a little bit each day towards our goal. We might have daily or weekly goals rather than, yeah, we, we had this goal, nobody really knew what it was, you know, the time frame was too big, and, you know, we didn't get everything done because, you know, as you start to chunk things up, uh, the goals become a little bit more visible, they become more apparent, and the students will do a better job if they can just take off little pieces rather than, I'm trying to eat this whole hamburger by itself. And also, always keep um, your teams, keep their memory in the fact that there's three parts to the competition. So just remind your teams, don't get too down on yourselves if the robot game is not going so hot, because that's just one aspect of the whole competition. I mean, we're always trying to get your team to get the most points that they can. But I always tell my, my teams, don't scoreboard watch too much because you end up looking at the scoreboard and it can affect the rest of your competition where your team goes into their core values or their project or robot design and they're like, yeah, why, what's the use? We lost already because they were looking at the scoreboard rather than going, okay, we might be fourth um, in the robot game, but you know, we could be first in our project. We could be second 
in our core values and the, you know everything put together can be better than what they just see on the screen because that's the thing about the robot game it's the only thing they can visually see and but they don't know they don't know how their project compares to everybody else they don't know how their core values compare to everybody else so coaches just remind your team you know you can look at the scoreboard but don't let that affect your attitude don't let it affect the way that your team operates you know because oh we're fourth place we're just going to be so depressed don't get defeated by what you can see um, keep in mind that there's three aspects and you know they should never be depressed about anything because one of their core values is we have fun and also you know we value what we discover more than what we win and I, I get it kids are gonna be competitive to the point where they do let their emotions um, come in but just remind them hey we're learning um, if you don't feel happy remember how that feels like let it motivate you for next year um, to just be better than that okay all right guys hopefully this was helpful I mean there's other things that I might do another video on that I forgot for this one but for now, hopefully this was a good start for those of you that are coaching, those of you that are students that are watching, just some things to keep in mind to help your team do the best they can. Okay, guys, I hope you're still having fun with City Shaper. I'm Mr. Hino from Michigan Zyga Robotics. I'm out.